Thanks for clicking the video. I get sent a lot of training aids throughout the last five years. I have been sent all different kinds of things for speed, for strike, for plane. And usually when I get sent something, it gets put into a couple different categories. Like it's sometimes it's like reimagination of something that's already been done, or it's something very high tech. Very rarely do I get sent something that where I'm, I think, oh, I thought of that before, or I've seen that before. Until now, I now I have been sent something that really, really seems very new to me. It's an idea that I, I hadn't considered a training aid that could do this, but it does seem to address a fundamental problem with golf that really, since they decided how to make a golf club, there has been this inherent problem with golf. It's the reason that golf is so unintuitive and so difficult. And this training aid, I think, kind of addresses that. It's right here, it's called the GEM. So GEM stands for Golf's Essential Move. What it is, is a counterweight bar that hangs off the opposite side of the club from the face. So this is it all set up. This is the GEM. So you see, the first thing that you'll notice, if you hang it like that, what does it do differently than a normal club? It hangs in balance with the toe up. And what does that do? Let's just check it out and you'll see. All right, the reason I'm starting this video here on the stage is because to start, you just want to do air swings with the gem. You're just swinging it back and, and forth and you're going to feel something very, very weird when you first start to do it. So as you swing it, the first thing that they want you to do is take air swings that are about from rib high to rib high on both sides. And when you first do this, it feels really weird. So I had a long conference call with the inventor of the gem and then also his partner. And they were telling me that you really need to keep swinging this as an air swing until it doesn't feel heavy. They said, if you can feel the bar and it feels heavy, then you're still not swinging it quite right. They said, sometimes it takes weeks or so of swinging it where eventually you'll start swinging it and it will feel light the entire time. And if you're swinging it and it feels light the whole time, then you're swinging a golf club the way you should be. The guy who invented this is a Scottish pro who's a really good player. He played in the 2010 Senior British Open and he made the cut. He said really the problem with golf he sees is that everyone closes the face on the way back and then on the way through they, they're opening the face. That's really similar to what we've seen with some high-tech things that I've been using recently, where the face is closed, it gets even more closed, and then on the way down, it's, it's opening on the way down. So kind of like this, see it's to the ground, or it's inside into the ground, and then through the impact, it's opening this way. He said that really good players do the opposite, where they open the face going back, and then they close it going through. Almost everybody does is, they're too closed here. It's looking at the ground. And then when they come back, they're too open here. And then they're fanning this way through the shot. Kind of like uh, in ping pong, if you wanted to, to just take something off a shot to hit like kind of a drop shot in ping pong or, or tennis, where they're kind of hitting a drop shot through impact. And he said, no, we want to hit that boom, overhand smash like that. If you see, if I take this just one handed and swing it this way, it wants to go toe up. See, if I just hold it there like that, boom, that's toe up. And then I swing it through here, hold it like that. See, that's toe up. So this thing wants you to go that way. The pro pattern is to have it opening here and then closing through the shot. And that's a really big difference. So I started swinging this in my back patio and I was thinking, wow, this feels really good. I feel very open at what would be impact and through to the finish. I really felt like I was catching it and I was in front of it this way. But there was a big problem with the gem for me at first. And the problem was that when I looked back at my swings, because I was thinking, this feels really good. I want to see what these swings look like. So I recorded myself and what I saw was that I was taking it back all right, but in getting that open, I was going really over the top. And when I was swinging it, my club head was still like eight or nine inches off the ground. I started thinking like, huh, how do I 
get this thing down to the ground and not have it be over. So I went to the range and I used it with my friend David, who's a pro here. And then same thing, like rib to rib kind of feeling. Yeah. It was good. Nice. That was good. Just looks more together through the bowl, yeah? Yeah, yeah. For sure. The gem gives you an amazing feeling that you're actually squaring the club face with your body and not your hands. Normally, I have the problem where I'll swing down and then my body will freeze and then I'll try to square the face up with this action there. Rather than like if we see Milo or some really good players hit the ball, they're here and then they're they're going all the way open through it. It's like they're squaring it with their body. And you can see how much more consistent they could be. This is just never gonna be as consistent as somebody who does this. But I was still having that over move with it. And then I fixed it. I had to feel the weirdest thing with the gym in order to not only get open and impact, but never be over the top. That's a question I ask pros all the time like okay I know you want me to be open but how do I be open if I'm up here how do I get to a spot where I'm open at impact but I don't go open and over and this kind of showed me it's almost like a tumble move or something weird when my wife first saw me swinging this thing she said aren't you gonna hit yourself with this bar in the leg and then when I was practicing with it on the range I thought about what she said and I said well, what about if I just go to the top and I feel like I'm going to take this bar and I'm going to, it sounds weird, but this is what I thought. I'm going to take this bar and I'm going to put it in between my legs, right from the top. I'm going to go like this and I'm going to go boom. And that was it. Once I got this motion right, I noticed that every one of my practice swings was no longer over and open, but it was planed and then open. And it felt really good. I had to feel like I'm pulling it this way. So then I did the protocol. The protocol is to take 10 swings with the gem on and then take this off. It only takes about two seconds to take it off and then place that down on the ground and then hit a shot. So I did that three times in a row, 10 air swings with the gem on and then hit a pitching wedge. And then I took 10 air swings and hit a six iron. And then I took 10 air swings and hit an eight iron. And all three were the best three iron shots of probably the last couple years that I've hit. So I knew I was onto something with the gym. Yesterday, I took it over to my friend's place called Swing Core Golf. It's an indoor place that has a flight scope monitor and it has kind of a lab setting where I could really see like, okay, does it only feel like it's crushed? Cause like I can see the ball going further and it feels compressed, but let's see on the machine what was happening. Okay, so I brought the gem over here to swing court golf because I want to see what's happening. It feels on the range really solid. And I know from using machines and things before what my smash factor usually is, what my distances usually are. So if the smash factor is higher and the distances are further, then it really is doing something. I mean, it, like, yeah, I can feel it. I can feel the compression, but I want to see what the numbers are. And especially, I want to see what is happening. When I review the video on with the, the move that I was talking about as far as this way to, I feel like I'm going to take this bar for lack of a better way to put it. I feel like I'm gonna take this bar and hit myself right in the, the groin with it. Like it has to tip over and hit myself. It's very weird. It's reminded me a lot of what Mike Velasquez has said to me before. All right, little shot. So I take this off, it takes about three seconds to unscrew that thing. Just like, yeah, that's really good. That's a 137 smash. A very, very easy 8-iron at 178. So, 
that shows something there, because that was very, very just gentle. I mean, it probably didn't look gentle, but I felt like I only swung it to my rib high, and then swung it again in this way, and it was a 137 smash and 178 distance for an 8-iron, so it's quite really good. What's really exciting, too, is that the launch was very low. With the uh, angle of attack being very shallow, so those two things together are, is kind of the, where the magic is, where you can get a shallow angle of attack, but a low launch. Let's try that again. That one I swung harder though. So I swung harder, it went two yards further, that was 180 yard, eight iron. The smash went down though from 137 to 134, still very good, still, that's still a good smash for, and eight iron. Okay, so let's let's do it again. Let's screw this on. This is kind of a down the line training aid. It's something that you think about down the line initially. But I think actually something is happening where this is actually a face on training aid just as much. If I watch the pro that invented this thing swinging, it, he really accentuates when he's doing it this. So it almost looks like he's flipping at it through impact when he's telling people how to do it. And I asked him about it, I was like, well, nobody's trying to do this through impact. Why are, why are you demonstrating like this? And his thing was saying, was saying that he thinks most of the golf problems for the high handicappers and people that he's teaching comes from an open face through impact. So he said he's fine with encouraging whatever can happen to make sure that face squares. Let's go through the protocol here again. One, two, little baby ones, three. It's hard to explain that move right there. One seventy six. That one was a fade. Angle of attack was really shallow. The face closing is the thing that keeps it from going over, which really doesn't make sense to me at first. I have to think about why that is. That's the one I like. Yeah, that was really good. One eighty six carried on that eight iron. Angle of attack was a little better there, down. Smash, way high, up at 1.38. That's incredibly high for me for a, for a smash on an on iron shot. Oh, I killed that. So that's 196 yards, eight iron. And angle of attack was three down, so that's better. And the smash factor was higher at 135. So that one was not, the other, the first couple that I was hitting were going like 180 with a little like kind of chippy motion. That one I actually tried to hit it full. And gosh, I just smoked it. The club cap was going four degrees left. So let's just see, that's the only thing. Let's see if I can get the club path a little bit more neutral. And back off of the speed a little bit. I don't need to be hitting 196 yards with this 8-iron. More like 185. And then see if I can get that path a little bit neutral. Yeah, that was good. So it was a 3.3 degrees left path. 172 yards with the 8-iron. But still, 3 degrees left. Let's see if we can fix that. Yeah, that was great. All right, so now I have the path at zero. So the path was 0.3 to the left, which is exactly what I want. Here's the replay. Good takeaway. Oh yeah, that was very good. Path was 0.3 to the left. And that eight iron went 187 yards. My angle of attack was two degrees down. The ball speed was at 123 and the club speed was at 92 for a smash factor of 1.34. So those were really good. And the spread of all these shots, I've only had really one miss hit, but the spread of all these shots is much better. Let's try, everybody's gonna ask, how does this change with driver? So let's try driver and see what happens. Our 
right, so there's 169. So what I discovered at Swing Core Golf was really encouraging to me because at this point, I think I can tell, just from looking at the data, what a tour quality strike is and what kind of a bunting or a glancing, really, strike of the golf ball is. Really, the first thing to look at is just the smash factors. Like, I've never had iron smash factors that high, like up near 1.4. Never, like, I hit maybe 25 shots in the course of the hour and a half that I was there. Lots of air swings and then 25 shots. And all of them were like 0.34 or above. And normally I'm not that close to 1.4 on the irons. And I was, and that was really exciting. But beyond smash, other data was really exciting for me as well. I was seeing that over the course of these shots, like 25 or so shots, all of them were having a very low dynamic loft. Not insane, but it was like perfectly low. Like I was taking off about 14 degrees of the club while I was still having a shallow angle of approach. I've talked about this in the channel before where some people can have a low dynamic loft and impact, but the only way they get it is by being very steep. And some people can have a very shallow angle of attack, but the only way they can get that is by being very flippy. Very, very few people can have a low dynamic loft and a shallow delivery, a shallow angle of attack. So that was really exciting. So needless to say, I like the gem a lot. I think everybody should try it. I think that it really solves a problem with the golf club. The problem with the golf club is that it's a crooked stick. It's bent. And that's the rules. They made clubs in the 1960s and earlier. They made clubs with counterweights on the other side of them. And people were hitting them so straight, they immediately made them illegal. So we're stuck with this. You're, not, you're never going to be allowed to uh, make a golf club that has a big weight on the other end of it. So you can just swing it the way you would swing a baseball bat or a normal stick or a croquet mallet or a hammer or anything like that. We're stuck with golf being like this. And because we're doing that, that kind of kills our athleticism. We shut off all these different systems of athleticism in order to square the face up. We come down, we freeze and flip through impact. But when you put the gem on, it gets you swinging the way you would do anything other athletically. So many people are athletic in everything they do, but just not golf. And why? It's because it's of the face. The face is bent up all weird. And in order to figure out how to hit the straight ball straight with this club that's bent, like, what is that? Almost 90 degrees, like an L, uh, you have to you know, figure some certain things out athletically. And some people will just never figure them, figure them out. This really keys you into, oh, that's how my body should be moving. You can see about how consistent that would be, not very, but if you go here and go like that, now you're really getting the face and your body working together. Normally, I don't like training aids that you can't hit balls with. This, you can hit balls with it with the short stick, but with the medium and the long stick, you can't hit balls with it. But because you can take it off so quickly and you can just take it off in about two seconds, put it on the ground and then hit balls with it, you can get that really good feedback loop of flip-flopping between swinging air swings with it on and then hitting balls without it on that you get like the full benefit of something where as if you were hitting with it. And the thing that I saw at Swing Core Golf and I broke par for the first time in a while, the last time I played and, and other things really, is that the stickiness of the training aid works really well. I think it's quite sticky what goes on with the gym. It teaches you something and it kind of gets into your bones pretty quickly. I talked to the owners of the gym and I organized a discount for Be Better Golfers. And they're also going to throw on top of the discount, they're doing a free shipping in the United States and the UK and also I think some other countries as well, but you want to check their website to make sure. But they're doing free shipping for the rest of 2022. And if you use the code BBGOLF10, you'll get 10% off of this as well. I think it's really good. It's something that will, I think, solve a problem that has been stuck with golf for a long time. And I think a lot of people are going to have a lot more fun playing golf. So it's called The Gem. You can check it out. I have the link in the description to this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. I have a lot of really cool stuff coming up. I'm doing a golf school with Milo and Dr. Kwan that sold out. So I want to get some really cool footage. I'm going to try to get out on the course with Milo and Dr. Kwan. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that and really try to dig into uh, the similarities of what they are both teaching. Because I think 
the overlap there, it can be really useful for golfers. And I think you're going to like that. So click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Bye. All right, I don't know if it's overkill by this point, but I think it's an important point that I wanted to bring up. If I take this thing here and how this wants me to take it, and you take it back where it just feels light, see that's taking it to a toe up position. And the toe up position in the backswing was a really big thing like in the 90s. And recently, almost everybody's trying to get the face angle on the spine angle here. So I asked the pro that invented this about that. And what he said is that, for certain very athletic players that use the face correctly already, they go on the spine angle and then on the way through, they get out of the way of it enough to be able to still have that motion where it's open to close. So in order to do that, he said he really likes, even if you, like I do, I wanna be have this aligned to my spine right here. I don't really want it to be toe up. But he said, even if you want that, you should swing still with this in this normal position here for the practice swings because that's gonna get your pattern working the right way of it being open to closed through rather than closed to opening. Kind of like you would bunt a ball where you bunt it in baseball. No, we don't want to bunt it, we wanna smash it. So that's when we're gonna go this way to this way through the shot. So when you hear people talking about the gym, about this toe up position, for some people and a lot of pros throughout history, the toe up position has been like the position they wanna get. Nowadays, it's less important to be toe up. A lot of people wanna be kind of having more spank release, but the physics are the same. Because the club is still off the, the side of it, you still have to feel open to closing through the shot.